They use a, uh, it's a single bulb. They use a servo activated shutter for your high beams. So you really are doing everything off one bulb with this car. Um, and anyways, uh, I'd like to be able to see at night. So after doing a lot of reading and um, watching videos on YouTube and reading uh, volt forums and lighting forums, um, I ended up buying a Morimoto um, system from the Retro Source. I've talked to those guys on the phone a couple of times, uh, emailed back and forth with my questions. There's so much misinformation on the internet about um, HIDs for the Volt, or HIDs in general, I guess. But um, So I'm making this video to try and dispel some of the bullshit that's out there, and there's just a lot of bad information, misinformed information. People have good intentions, but they're just, um, haven't done the research, I guess. Um, so anyways, let me start off by saying that, um, the Chevy Volt uses a, um, a pulse width modulated, um, system for the headlights. And, uh, a lot of forums say, "Oh, you don't need, you don't need any relays. You don't need a capacitor. Um, you don't need a CAN bus, and or you need this but not that." And uh, man, there's just no clear consensus. You can't just watch a couple videos and feel confident that you got any good information. So after reading a lot of that stuff and talking with the people. Um, in Atlanta, Georgia at the retrofit source. Um, you do need a relay and you need a relay with their capacitor link. Um, this is the capacitor link right here. That's the actual capacitor. <clears throat> this is the relay. Um, this is all more Morimoto products. Um, so so hopefully that answers a few questions right off the bat. Um, a CAN bus is not the right um, answer for this application. Um, another thing I saw a lot of was people taking their dust covers and then bitching that, um, you know, they were told to drill a certain size hole or whatever for their, for their um, grommet, their weatherproofing proofing grommet and that the uh, plugs didn't fit through it and they had to hog out their, you know, they didn't know, well, I used a spade bit and now I can't drill a bigger hole. So they packed out their holes to make it bigger to pass the plug through it. Well, you don't need to do that. Um, in my case, I used a um, three quarter inch diameter bit. Uh, first I machined the tabs down. I figured out how much clearance I needed on these tabs. Sorry, I'm not a great um, cinema, cinematographer here. Anyways, um, for these um, silicone grommets, uh, three quarter inch bit um, works great. The people at um, Retrofit actually gave me a metric measurement of something like 22 millimeters or something. I don't remember, but um, I just measured the the actual, um, you know, distance from the core of it across. And so I drilled a three quarter inch hole. I flat, you can see my marks here cause I used the bastard file and I fly, filed this all nice and flat so it could actually seal. Um, and, and the answer to the first dilemma that a bunch of people couldn't figure out is, yeah, you got to take these pins out. This whole thing is like, you know, you got to drill a huge hole if you want to pass that whole thing through there and it's, and then your grommet's not going to do you a bit of good. So you have to disassemble this. Basically I've marked, you know, the orientation of the positive and negative and this little clip piece actually pops off and then you need a, a tool to go on the inside of these tabs here from this side and release the little spring loaded tab. And these have a nice little silicone grommet like this on each wire and down inside. This is very well put together. Anyways, you have to pull that apart, then put your wires through the correct way, and then put the plug back together. So 
that's that. Um, I'm going to stop the video now because I'm going to do some more work and then I'll I'll add on to it. But I've remo removed my air box just to get better access. Here's the um, here's one of the um, light sockets. There's the factory wiring. <clears throat> From laying this out, it looks like I'm going to probably end up mounting my relays um, on this side of the engine bay and. Um, you only have to tap into the OEM uh, lighting on one side. It doesn't matter which side. This is just your trigger to your relay. And, um, and in conjunction with the capacitor. And I will probably tie into, as a couple of other people have shown, um, there is a port right here uh, with a little cover for jump starting which is a whole nother topic that a lot of people do, do not understand about the volt. Maybe I'll make a separate video about that, but here's your ground. Here's your jump start. And, um, everybody thinks this is to jump start your volt. Um, I would hypothesize it's the other way around. It's to use the volt to jump start somebody else's car. Um, we, we can talk about that another time. Anyways, um, I'm going to stop the video now and, uh, make some more progress and get back to it.